Welcome to the Rewriting Naruto series part 20, a series of videos where I rewrite Naruto making changes to improve the story from a personal taste. This is only part 20 of a very long series, so definitely subscribe so you never miss any future rewrite videos, ring the notification bell so you always know when they come out, and like this video to support the channel and the series. The goal is gonna be 1200 likes. If we get to 1200 within the first 24 hours, I'll drop the next rewrite within a week. Kakuzu enveloped by his robust armor of tendrils and with eight massive tendril tentacles sprawling out of his body stares at the Konoha ninjas. Rock Lee has just activated his fifth gate, Choji just ate all his spills at once, manifesting his butterfly wings and his body is covered in burns. Naruto has created 20 shadow clones, Sakura is pumping chakra into her fists, while Yamato is gathering chakra as well. Ino is healing Kakashi who is unconscious and she says with fear on her face, be careful. His chakra has increased exponentially after that armor appeared. Naruto says, Ino, take Akashi Sensei somewhere safe. This fight's probably going to destroy this whole area. Ino nods, grabs Kakashi and jumps away. Naruto continues to say, we have to find out how strong he is before I use my Rasen Shuriken. I only have chakra for one more charge. And as Captain Yamato said, it's the only thing we have that can kill him. They all nod. Yamato weaves hand signs. Wood style. Rapid splinters. Pieces of wood are a ejected from the ground in front of Yamato and they cruise through the air with great speed aiming at Kakuzu. Rock Lee dashes forward destroying the ground underneath him from the sheer speed and power he uses. Choji says, Great expansion jutsu! Turning himself 20 times larger than usual. His butterfly wings now enormous as well. Before Rock Lee is able to engage Kakuzu in a hand to hand, three of the massive tentacles intercept him and another tentacle blocks the incoming wood style from Yamato. The tentacles are so fast, they seem to create this blur around Kakuzu. Rock Lee dodges the tentacles, attempting to get closer to Kakuzu's main body, but the tentacles force Lee to keep a distance. Naruto sends his shadow clones in, and Sakura goes with them, and at the same time, Choji moves forward as well, causing tremors everywhere he steps. Half of the Naruto clones and Sakura jump in front of the other half of the clones, who weave hand signs and send them flying towards Kakuzu with several gates. Palms. The clones and Sakura are intercepted midair by two tentacles. Choji's hulking body engages Kakuzu from the other side. Two tentacles grapple his left hand, but Choji sends his butterfly wing chakra into his right hand, saying, Butterfly bullet bombing! He throws a punch at Kakuzu's main body, being able to reach it because of his great size. Three of Kakuzu's tentacles combine themselves, forming a shield and blocking Choji's punch. As the shield absorbs the impact, a shock wave of air hits the landscape. Yamato begins to weave hand signs. The tentacles strike the Naruto clones and they are swiftly destroyed. Sakura manages to punch one of the tentacles with violent force, knocking it to the side, but another tentacle reaches her. Yamato says, ensnaring roots! Once again, roots erupt all around Kakuzu's body. However, this time he clenches his fists and destroys them with taijutsu before they can even make contact. And he does all that while his tentacles are still engaged with the leaf ninjas. The two tentacles grappling Choji's massive hand manage to power through and throw Choji's gargantuan body to the ground. The wind mask appears at the tip of one of the tentacles that threw Choji down. It opens and unleashes a massive wind style jutsu that sends Choji flying and destroying a large section of the forest with his huge body. Sakura who's engaged with one other tentacle says, he can move his mask freely around his body, be careful! As she says that, the fire mask appears right next to her where the tentacle she was engaged with is. The mask unleashes its fire. At the last second, Rock Lee appears and punches that tentacle, sending the fire to another direction, diverting its aim. The remaining 10 Naruto shadow clones surround Kakuzu from all sides and weave hand sides, creating 10 wind dragons that fly towards Kakuzu. Kakuzu forms hand signs as well, Wind style, wind carousel. The tentacle with the wind mask on the tip swirls violently at all directions, spitting wind that creates a protective dome in which the dragons impact. Lee uses that moment of opportunity to dodge the four tentacles inside of the wind dome as Sakura weaves hand signs. Lee reaches Kakuzu's body. The fire mask appears in the middle of Kakuzu's chest, opening up. Genjutsu, inner self-release. Sakura releases her genjutsu on the the 
fire mask. The inner self appears, closing the mask and not allowing it to fire towards Lee. A tentacle then hits Sakura and sends her flying away, leaving the window with great speed. Rock Lee has an opening. He stares at Kakuzu, whose face is completely covered by the helmet of tendrils and says, Behold the power of youth! Hidden Lotus! Rock Lee throws a punch at Kakuzu's head and a kick at Kakuzu's torso simultaneously. The force of the impact creates a large crater around Lee and Kakuzu, sending rocks flying everywhere and Kakuzu is sent flying to the opposite direction. The Naruto clones who are surrounding Kakuzu are all destroyed by the shockwave as the wind dome fizzles out as well. Yamato uses his wood style to catch Sakura before she hits anything. Rock Lee is breathing heavily. Choji stands up, now even more hurt than before with blood all around his body on top of the burns and he has returned to his normal size. Kakuzu manages to land on his feet. His tendril armor is caved in in the areas where Rock Lee hit him but the tendrils quickly grow back and return to their former shape. Lee thinks, he shrugged off my hidden lotus? Naruto thinks, this is bad news. Bushibra was only able to hit him because of his insane speed. Those tentacles are too fast and they're eight of them. And even though I am much faster now, I'll never let my Rasen Shuriken on that guy. He then says, the only way we're defeating this guy is if we manage to stop all of his tentacles so I can hit him with the Rasen Shuriken. Yamato says, yeah, but that's not gonna be easy. Choji says, still, it's the only way we can do it. Rock Lee falls to a knee, his gates fade, and he thinks, the fifth gate has reached its limit. Kakuzu says, that was not very impressive. I expected more, and I was only defending myself. Kakuzu throws two tentacles up above his body. The fire and wind masks appear at the tip of both tentacles. Let's see how you deal with offense. Hellish shower. Both masks unleash fire and wind from above, which enhance themselves when combined, covering a massive area. Lee is the closest to Kakuzu. Therefore, he is the first one that's about to be engulfed by the attack. As he motions to move away, his muscles give in, the muscle fiber is destroyed by the gates, and Lee is unable to dodge the fire style. Yamato, Naruto, and Sakura react, weaving hand signs at the same time. Genjutsu! Adrenaline rush! Rock Lee feels his muscles gaining power and his body being pumped up by adrenaline. He stands up and begins to run. However, he isn't fast enough. The wall of hell will engulf him. Wind style! Power vacuum! Naruto sucks in air with his mouth. The air suction rapidly pulls Rock Lee towards the Konoha ninjas, allowing him to outrun the fire. Lee reaches his allies, but the fire is closed, almost hitting all of them now. Wood style! Consecutive wall barriers! Massive wood walls erupt from the ground. The fire impacts them, destroying them all, turning them into ash. But more walls come out of the ground and keep on coming, protecting them, as Yamato just pumps more and more chakra into the ground, blocking the fire, which passes next to the Konoha team who stands behind the wall. They can feel the heat on their skin, but the walls don't let the fire hit them directly. Lee says, how did I escape? I felt a surge of power. Sakura says, I caught you my genjutsu Lee, one that I developed myself. I forced your adrenal gland to produce copious amounts of adrenaline in an instant. It's a last resort, but it allowed you to move even though your muscles are in terrible shape. Yamato is still producing his wood walls blocking the fire, putting everything he has into blocking it, and he says, Naruto, are you sure you can do this? If you can't hit this guy, we'll have to retreat, or we will die here. You trusted me before, and I failed. Because of that, you all got hurt, and now I ask you to trust me again one more time. If you are able to stop those tentacles, I will destroy this guy no matter what. I promise you on my dream of becoming a Hokage, we're winning this. Choji says, So, do you have another plan, Naruto? Without Kakashi Sensei and Ino, the only thing I can think of is sheer brute strength. Lee, can you still fight? Lee nods, and Sakura says, But Lee, the fifth gate has expired. You are in no shape to fight. Rock Lee smiles and says, It's alright, Sakura. The fifth gate is no longer my limit. Naruto nods and says, Hold those tentacles for me, guys. Each of you needs to hold two 
and I'll finish the guy off. We cut to Ino healing Kakashi in an alcove hidden in the forest. Kakashi begins to stir, but Ino cannot shake off her fear as she sees from afar the massive column of fire. She can even feel the heat from all this distance. As we cut back to the Leaf team, Naruto gives Sakura a large Huma shuriken and says, Use it when you have an opening, Sakura. She nods. Rock Lee is very hurt and fatigued, but he focuses and powers through with every fiber of his being saying, Sixth gate, the gate of view, open! Green energy explodes from Rock Lee's body with ferocity he's never shown before and he says, I'm ready! Kakuzu's fire barrage stops, smoke and ash surrounds the Konoha team and Yamato seems very relieved because he no longer has to keep up bringing those wood barriers non-stop. He then says, if we're doing this, then I'll go first. I'm probably the one who can withstand them the most. Really? You're offering yourself up as bait? I'm simply the best for the job. He weaves hand signs and says, wood style, omni armor. Wood erupts from his skin, encasing his entire body in the shape of an armor. Yamato says, I'll be able to withstand his fire better with this, but it spans a lot of my chakra and I don't have much time. Naruto nods, he forms a shadow clone sign. Shadow clone ju- Kakuzu appears, coming out of the smoke with great speed and he punches Naruto to the stomach, sending him flying away as he spits blood and cakes on the ground. Rock Lee immediately engages Kakuzu, who uses his tentacles to fight him off, but now Rock Lee is much faster, throwing punches that send shockwaves as his tentacles bury and try to hit back. Sakura screams, Naruto! Naruto stands up, bleeding and hurt. He then hears a voice saying, <laughs> Watching them die will be Fun, but don't worry, Naruto. When they're all dead, I'll come out and save you. Naruto ignores the Nine Tails and responds to Sakura. I'm fine. Just follow the plan. He creates two shadow clones and begins to form a white Rasengan. Yamato says, "Remember, I'm first. Choji, Lee, and Sakura nod. Lee is still engaged with the tentacles, but he disengages from the fight as the wind and fire masks begin to unleash their power, forcing him to dodge. Yamato begins. To weave hand signs, amassing a large amount of chakra that begins to ooze from his wooden armor. Rock Lee executes insane dodging maneuvers with great speed to avoid the elemental style attacks. Choji Lee and Sakura then rush Kakuzu at the same time. The three throw their punches against Kakuzu simultaneously. Three extremely powerful punches. Kakuzu is forced to use all eight tentacles, forming a massive shield to block the triple punch attack and still he is sent flying but lands on his feet. Yamato says, I think I've gathered enough chakra. Wood style, wood dragon. A large wood dragon erupts from the ground and dashes towards Kakuzu, who's now some distance away. Yamato with his wood armor stands tall on the dragon's head, dashing as well. As he gets close, Kakuzu throws two tentacles that wrap themselves around the wood dragon, stopping it. However, Yamato weaves more hand signs. Wood style. Dragon and snare. Dozens of smaller wood dragons come out of the large wood dragon and wrap themselves around Kakuzu's tentacles, using the large dragon to grapple the tentacles in place. Rock Lee, Choji, and Sakura dash towards Kakuzu, and Naruto's Rasen Shuriken is now completely formed. The fire mask opens and breathes out a gargantuan fire gust onto the wood dragon and Yamato, who braces himself with the armor, screaming, Keep going no matter what! Rock Lee engages the tentacles. The wind mask attempts to shoot several cutting gusts of wind, but Lee is too fast and dodges them all. He then grapples two of the tentacles, using his arms and legs to gain better leverage. He has to use all of his strength to prevent the thick tentacles from splitting into thinner wires, but he manages to do so. Naruto begins to dash forward with his Rasen Shuriken in hand, accompanied by two of his shadow clones. Clones. Rock Lee is completely exposed. He can move or the tentacles he is mobilizing will get loose again. Another tentacle approaches him and the wind mask appears, shooting at Lee. As Lee is about to get hit by the wind, a massive hand blocks the wind style attack, getting cuts everywhere. Choji has increased his size again and quickly after blocking that wind style attack, he uses his bleeding hand to grapple that very same tentacle. Five tentacles are immobilized now. 
three to go. The fire mask is still bursting hellfire on Yamato. Sakura gets closer and tosses the Huma shuriken Naruto gave her towards Kakuzu's main body. Kakuzu doesn't even bother using his tentacles to block it. The shuriken impacts his armor and does absolutely no damage, falling to the ground next to him. Another tentacle comes towards Sakura as she left herself open to throw the shuriken. The wind mask comes out of the tip of that tentacle aiming at Sakura. Shoji uses his other hand to grab that tentacle and twists it upwards, making the wind mask shoot up and miss Sakura. Naruto begins to approach with his Rasen shuriken. Shoji then grapples that tentacle and uses his gargantuan weight to immobilize both tentacles in his grasp completely. The two remaining tentacles descend upon Sakura, who weaves hand signs, unleashing her inner self avatar onto the wind mask that just appeared at the tip of one of the tentacles to attack her. The mask is immobilized by the genjutsu for a split second before Kakuzu breaks it out of it. That buys Sakura enough time to grapple that tentacle. Seven tentacles are now immobilized. One to go. The fire mask still keeps on unleashing Inferno on Yamato, who somehow still manages to immobilize the two tentacles he has a grasp on. Naruto keeps on running and now he picks up speed after seeing that almost all tentacles have been immobilized. Kakuzu pulls his last free tentacle out of Sakura's reach and she thinks, Damn it, I failed. I only grappled one. Kakuzu says, That's enough. I'll kill the fat one first. The last tentacle launches itself towards Choji's heart. Choji could let go of the two tentacles he is holding with all his strength and try to dodge the attack, but he chooses not to, so that they may have a chance to win the fight. He simply prepares for the impact of the tentacle who is about to pierce through his heart. Choji stares at death with a kind smile on his face. Shadow suing Jutsu! A dozen Large black needles come out of the ground and pierce the last free tentacle, immobilizing it. Choji sees Shikamaru concentrated on his jutsu and he yelps in happiness. Kakuzu thinks, What? That brat beat he done? And all of my tentacles are now immobilized. I can barely move. He sees Naruto approaching directly ahead. And Kakuzu says, You're not killing me, Nine Tails. I've been in worse predicaments before. We get a cinematic shot of all Konoha ninjas holding Kakuzu's tentacles down as Naruto dashes towards him with the Rasen Shuriken. The wind mask emerges from the middle of Kakuzu's chest, coming out of the suit of armor, and unleash a gust of wind towards Naruto. The two shadow clones escorting the original weave hand signs, wind style, great wind schism. Both clones spit a powerful gust of wind as well that collides with Kakuzu's wind style, but Naruto's jutsu is overpowered. Kakuzu's gust punches through. Sakura, still grappling a tentacle, weaves hand signs in an awkward position. Inner self release! Sakura's avatar closes the wind mask and the gust ceases. Naruto withstands the wind that broke through his jutsu, however his two shadow clones are destroyed. Kakuzu finally stops the fire destruction upon Yamato and brings the fire mask to his chest as well, aiming directly at Naruto, who is only a couple of paces away as he raises his Rasen shuriken up. Kakuzu breaks breaks his wind mask out of the inner self genjutsu and both masks charge to unleash Kakuzu's full might and destroy Naruto. Sakura thinks, damn it, even if I could weave hand signs in time, I can only put one of the masks under the genjutsu. Kakuzu says, I win, Nine Tails. Naruto stares at the fire and wind beginning to coalesce in the mouths of the masks. A memory flashes in Naruto's mind. He's about two years younger and he is weaving hand signs and then putting his hand on top of the scroll. He also seems a little annoyed. Naruto tells Jiraiya, who is sitting next to him in a hotel room, I don't get it, pervy sage. Why do I have to practice that jutsu every night before going to bed? Silly jutsus are so boring. Jiraiya sighs. You are an Uzumaki. You should be a master of ceiling jutsus. But I want to learn something that deals damage. Don't be so narrow-minded. This jutsu you're practicing right now is a paralysis ceiling jutsu. 
It restrains the movements of a target. Really? Yeah, it can be very useful in a fight, as you might imagine. So once I master this jutsu, I'll be able to mobilize an Akatsuki member and bring them back to the Leaf Village, and I will be able to question them, and then we'll find their Akatsuki hideout? Jiraiya laughs. You have quite an imagination, Naruto, but of course not. The more powerful the target is, the shorter the paralysis will last. This particular ceiling jutsu would restrain an Akatsuki member for probably around 0.2 seconds. Naruto's face drops. 0.2 seconds? That's outrageously low! Jiraiya looks at Naruto with a more serious expression and says, Do not underestimate the difference 0.2 seconds can make in a high-level fight, Naruto. Kakuzu's fire and wind masks are about to fire. The Huma Shuriken on the ground next to Kakuzu turns into a Naruto shadow clone who's weaving hand signs. Kakuzu thinks, what? That Shuriken was a clone all along? I should have known. The clone touches Kakuzu's armor saying, ninja art, acute paralysis. Ceiling signs form around Kakuzu's body. The original Naruto is a couple of inches away with his Rasen Shuriken and Kakuzu thinks, damn it, I can't move. I have to break the ceiling jutsu. He begins to accelerate his chakra flow and the ceiling signs begin to fade. Naruto's Rasen Shuriken is an inch away. We see Naruto's hand being damaged by his own jutsu and the Rasen Shuriken begins to fade. Just like before. Naruto looks in desperation at his jutsu that's losing power so close to the target. He hears a voice laughing maniacally. I knew it! <laughs> They're all going to die and you'll never win without me you idiot. Idiot. Naruto thinks about his friends and the sacrifices they've made during this fight. He then thinks about the last fight against Sasuke and Asuma's funeral. Naruto replies, Just watch me, you stinky fox! Naruto's eyes flash with determination. The ceiling marks disappear around Kakuzu's body and he smiles as the Rasen Shuriken is fading away. Kakuzu then locks eyes with Naruto and what he sees terrifies him. For an instant, he does not see Naruto, but the face of a man who once obliterated him. The face of Hashirama Senju. The Rasen Shuriken that was about to fizzle out explodes in energy, becoming twice as big as it was before. There is no time for Kakuzu to do anything. Rasen Shuriken! Naruto lands the Rasen Shuriken directly on Kakuzu's body who is sent flying with the Rasen Shuriken. The leaf ninjas quickly let go of Kakuzu's tentacles so they don't fly with him. Kakuzu flies hundreds of meters and then suddenly the Rasen Shuriken erupts into a globe of white destruction sending a powerful wind shockwave around the entire forest. Kakuzu gets hit by thousands of micro attacks attacks per second in the center of all the cataclysm. Sakura looks at that in awe, and Kakuzu's masks as well as his armor are obliterated by the Rasen Shuriken. Kakuzu finally falls to the ground in the middle of the crater, dead. The Rasen Shuriken destroyed all three remaining hearts simultaneously. Naruto falls to the ground completely exhausted, his right hand badly damaged. Rock Lee's gates fizzle out and he also falls to the ground in exhaustion his muscles completely torn. Choji reverts back to his normal size and his butterfly chakra fades. He falls to the ground unconscious. That idiot, he ate all his spills at once, didn't he? Sakura, however, runs towards another location in the battlefield, the place where Yamato withstood an uninterrupted barrage of fire. The ground there is completely burned away, and when Sakura sees Yamato's state for the first time, even with all her years of medical training, she shivers and feel sick and feel sick. Yamato has third degree burns in every single inch of his body. His wood armor and clothes were completely burned away as well. Sakura checks for a pulse. Miraculously, Yamato is still breathing. She begins healing immediately, pumping all her chakra into her medical ninjutsu. Naruto and Lee try to get up and help, but fail to do so. They're too tired and hurt. Shikamaru shakes Choji and says, Choji, come on, you can't die here. Come on! Ino 
arrives at the scene, helping Kakashi along, who's now conscious. Kakashi sits down and stares at his wounded comrades, and then at Kakuzu's dead body, who is in the center of a large crater, and he thinks, Yeah, it appears the younger generations will indeed suppress their predecessors. Ino runs towards Choji, and Shikamaru says, You gotta heal him now, you know. He ate all his pills at once. Ino immediately begins to heal Choji, and she says with tears on her face, It was my fault. If I hadn't been a burden, he would have been okay. Look at all his burns. Shikamaru says, The burns are our smallest concern now. Shikamaru pulls a bag of chips from his satchel, and while Ino heals Choji, he begins to feed Choji the chips. Even though Choji is unconscious, it's as though his body reacts on its own and eats the chips. Shikamaru says, We have to replenish his calories as quickly as we can. That's the only way he can survive. Sakura continues to heal Yamato with everything she has left, but her chakra is running low. She can't fathom the hellish experience Yamato went through, and even though his body was almost reduced to ash, he didn't let the tentacles go. Sakura can't help, but her respect for Yamato increases exponentially after this. Ino and her continue to heal, however their chakra begin to run out. Sakura thinks, if only that jutsu was ready, I could save him. Shikamaru finishes feeding Choji the chips, but Ino's healing stops as her chakra is now completely gone, and Shikamaru says, we have to take them back to the leaf village as fast as we can. If we don't heal them quickly, they'll die. Sakura says, none of us would be fast enough right now. We're either too tired or too hurt, or both. As she says that, her healing fades and her chakra runs out. Naruto, with a lot of effort, manages to stay on one knee and begins to concentrate his chakra. He then says, bring them here. Sakura brings Yamato over to Naruto and Shikamaru brings Choji. Using all the chakra he has left, Naruto gets blood from one of his wounds and summons Gamakichi, who's about 8 feet tall now. Gamakichi looks around and says, wow, something crazy happened here. Naruto says, no time Gamakichi, I need you to take these two back to the leaf village as fast as you can. Take them to Granny Tsunade, they'll need immediate healing. Gamakichi nods. He then puts Yamato and Choji on his back, using his chakra to attach them firmly and jumps away with intense speed. Naruto says, all we can do now is have faith. From a distance, Zetsu observes the battlefield. White Zetsu says, I can't believe they took out both Kakuzu and Hidan. Black Zetsu says, The Nine Tails brat has developed a new jutsu. He is getting stronger. You know, we have a shot now. They are all tired and the Nine Tails is very weakened. We should capture it. Yes, they are all tired, but it would still be six of them fighting against us. We are not fighters. We must inform the organization about Kaksu and Hidan's demise. Let's get going. Zetsu fades into the ground. Watch part 21 of the rewrite right here. Subscribe to this channel and like this video so we can reach the like goal. Comment down below what you thought about today's episode and thanks for watching.